I'm Ardil Khan. I'm one of the consultant plastic surgeons uh, at the Royal Marston Hospital, and I have an interest in uh, microvascular forms of reconstruction um, and a growing interest in microsurgical reconstruction for the treatment of cancer treatment-related lymphedema. Um, so we have recently published uh, a meta-analysis on the efficacy of vascularized lymph node transfers uh, in cancer patients who experience secondary lymphedema. So the the premise of the procedure is that we um, uh, the surgeon takes lymph nodes from a distant part of the body to that to that which is affected by lymphedema uh, as a lymph node flap, and using microsurgical techniques can connect that lymph node flap. Um, uh, into the, the limb that, that, exp that is experiencing lymphedema. And the lymph node flap works in one of two ways, we think. Uh, first of all, it acts as a soft tissue bridge uh, to connect disconnected lymphatic channels within the, within the lymphedematous limb. And secondly, it also acts like a wick, so it's able to soak up excess lymphatic fluid and bypass it straight into the venous circulation um, through, the, through the vessels of the flap. The Efficacy of uh, vascularized lymph node transfers so far has only been evaluated in uh, observational studies and retrospective studies uh, that have come from all over the world, um, really. I think the big proponents um, uh, of these procedures are in the Far East and in uh, the United States, where they're done increasingly commonly. So we are keen to develop a, a, a randomized clinical trial to evaluate the efficacy. And so the first step on this journey was really to do a synthesis of the, of the published literature already to see what is out there and what the um, reported efficacy is um, in cancer patients. So uh, we performed a meta-analysis um, uh, of all the studies that, that had been published to date, and this included 31 studies from uh, 15 uh, different countries uh, and comprised 581 patients. And we had very strict uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria for um, uh, the, the terms that were used for the search strategy for the study, and also um, three of the co-authors went through and shortlisted studies for uh, more in-depth review as part of this meta-analysis. Uh, our final group of, of 31 studies um, evaluated the, the efficacy of vascularized lymph node transfer in both the upper limb, uh, so in patients with upper limb lymphedema, and in lower limb lymphedema as well. Through this meta-analysis, we were able to show that vascularized lymph node transfer can improve uh, volumetric outcomes in patients with lymphedema. Uh, and we focused on one specific measure known as the circumferential reduction rate. Uh, and we showed that in patients who had undergone uh, vascularized lymph node transfers, uh, in the upper limb, there was an up to 40% reduction in um, and circumferential uh, limb volume. And in the lower limb, uh, this was in the lower limb, this was 34%. We showed that across all of the studies, uh, the donor sites from which lymph node flaps were taken from ranged from those that were intra-abdominal, so a mental flaps, for example, uh, to extra-abdominal donor sites from uh, the axilla or underneath the chin or from, uh, from the groin. Uh, and our analysis seemed to suggest that uh, lymph node flaps that were taken from extra-abdominal regions, so such as the axilla or the chin or the arm, seemed to uh, have a great greater effect on volume reduction compared to those taken from inside the abdomen. The other thing that we found from our meta-analysis was that um, lymphedema, patients with lymphedema quite often get infections of the skin known as cellulitis. Uh, and we showed that patients who had undergone lymph node transfer had a reduction in the annual number of episodes of, of cellulitis by approximately two episodes a year. We also looked at lymphedema specific quality of life uh, and we showed uh, where it was reported. And actually a lot of studies hadn't reported um, uh, this particular outcome. But in the studies that did, we showed that overall there were improvements in lymphedema related quality of life. So, in conclusion, based upon the existing literature, uh, we think that there is good evidence to support rationale for a randomized clinical trial um, of this procedure. Um, uh, you know, we have a range of, well, we have um, a, additional trials in lymphedema currently open at the Royal Marsden Hospital uh, that focus on the upper limb. So, I think moving forward that this would be a, a, a technique that uh, we would choose to evaluate in lower limb lymphedema specifically. I think that was an excellent summary of uh, of the paper and the review that we've done so far into lymph node transfer. We should qualify the fact that there has actually been one randomised controlled trial, which was 
included in uh, our review. Um, so there is one RCT so far, but it's looking at some uh, slightly different uh, patients from uh, the ones that we will be planning to look at. The reason for the paper, as in why we did it, um, is because uh, there's been a lot published on lymph node transfer to date, as our, as our paper shows, you know, in excess of 200 studies so far. But the bottom line is that um, very few of them are actually um, strong enough from a research quality uh, point of view to be able to change decision making within the NHS or in other uh, healthcare systems, um, as in they don't produce strong enough data and strong enough research. So we're sort of looking back at what's been done so far to guide us in the future as to how we can um, really uh, support and stand on their shoulders and produce some more, uh, more useful and more powerful data um, to guide us as to how we manage lymphedema in the future. Uh, Ardil has mentioned the fact that um, this is looking at lymph node transfer, which is one surgical technique for managing lymphedema. Uh, we're also doing a study on LVA, which is lymphaticovenous bypass surgery or uh, lymphaticovenous anastomosis surgery, looking at breast cancer-related um, lymphedema in particular. Um, so we've got a number of different uh, avenues that we're following to try to um, expand the work on lymphedema that's been done. I think key to um, both, you know, the development of a, of a trial in this area and also the work that we're doing more broadly is the uh, involvement with our uh, involvement of patients. Um, and, you know, we are currently undertaking um, some patient engagement exercises supported by the Lymphedema Support Network because we really need to um, understand from the population of patients that suffer with lymphedema what um, the most important outcomes for them are and really their input into the design of any trials and research that we have is 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 really critical to their success absolutely and just as a little plug which is what Ardil was thinking of I think as well uh, if there are any patients who are members of the lymphedema support network watching this uh, I'm not sure whether it will reach them or not if you are an LSN member and you are interested then uh, look at the newsletter that's coming out soon because there'll be a little advert for a, an engagement, a couple of engagement evenings with Ardil and myself um, asking some deeper questions about their lymphedema and how we can adapt our research going forward.